So when we look at plants, we're probably very familiar with the stems and the roots and the leaves, but we also have to consider and also remember the major plant cell components. So of those plant cells, what is each one of those individual cells? What are they made out of? What do they contain? Well, they contain a nucleus. Uh, this controls the cell's actions, is often referred to as the command center of the cell, it contains most of the DNA. Even though the mitochondria and chloroplasts do have some of their own unique DNA, this would be the vast majority of the DNA. Uh, inside, we, or on the outside, I should say, of the nucleus, we have the nuclear envelope. There's, there's nuclear pores here that regulate what can come in, what can come out. Because this is the command center, it's very important the cell keeps this information protected. The mitochondria, uh, this is the uh, site where food is converted into energy through the process of cellular respiration. Uh, it does contain some of its own unique DNA, and it's the site specifically of what we call ATP synthesis. Adenosine triphosphate is the energy currency of the cell, and this is the main site where it is um, synthesized or made. Uh, to say it's the powerhouse of the cell, as many students will tell me it is, it's not really a proper reference to its function. Uh, the synthesis of ATP is a much more accurate description of what this organelle does. The chloroplasts contain the green pigment, it's, uh, it's called the chlorophyll, that capture light for photosynthesis. Also contains some of its own unique DNA. And there's a high concentration of chloroplasts give the plants this green color. We may notice here in New England in the fall, plants lose their, um, some trees lose their green color, and it'll start to turn different colors, and that's as a result of the breakdown of the chlorophyll, uh, which is located in the chloroplast. There's also some other pigments, but chlorophyll is the most dominant. The vacuoles we see here uh, has a large sac that contains water, stored food, salts, pigments, and other waste products. It can take up the majority of the volume of the cell, so it can vary, uh, but it can take almost up to about 90% of the cell. Ribosomes are the site of protein synthesis, and it's where amino acids are linked together. Uh, these ribosomes are these complex here. We kind of see one indicated here. We're not going to get into too much into the protein synthesis pathway, uh, but it's where all the amino acids are linked together to form polypeptides, also known as proteins. Specific types of proteins would be an example would be an enzyme. The endoplasmic reticulum, or ER, contains these interconnected network of membranes and closed tube-like structures. Uh, there's rough ER, which has ribosomes kind of put on top here, kind of studded on top. And we have smooth ER, which is more the site of lipid or fat synthesis. Golgi bodies are the site of protein processing, storage, and modification. You can see here's our nucleus, here's our rough ER, and then we would go to the Golgi apparatus. This tends to be one of the more uh, finishing uh, bodies where kind of we're modifying those uh, proteins that may have been produced from the rough ER and just tweaking them before they may be released outside the cell or put into the cell membrane. The cell membrane specifically is also known as a plasma membrane. It's what's called a phospholipid bilayer. There's a phospholipid and it is a bilayer, meaning there's two layers. This together helps the cell regulate what can enter and exit the cell, causing uh, this semi-permeable layer. It's present in both plant and animal cells. The cell wall is only present in plant cells. So the cell membrane, plant and animal, cell wall, only plant cells. We see here onion cells, uh, and the root tips in particular. Uh, cell walls are composed mainly of cellulose. Cellulose is a complex sugar molecule giving a lot of strength and rigidity. After the cell stops growing, this, the wall will thicken and become rigid, and it's not present in animal cells. So that's kind of what gives these kind of distinctive, almost box-like look appearance. It's the formation of that thick and rigid cell wall when a plant cell reaches the point of maturation.